Hello friend. In this video, we will briefly discuss the process of how a looked after child can be placed with a connected person who lives in a foreign country. We will examine the legal hurdles you have to overcome and also consider the hindrances to the placement of children outside of the United Kingdom. The scenario includes circumstances where a child became a looked after child because his or her parents or carers are unable to care for the child for whatever reason and there is a viable family member who resides outside the United Kingdom. Let us assume for the purpose of this discussion that a specialist assessment concludes that it is in the best interest of the child to place him or her with a member of the wider family who resides outside of the United Kingdom. We will first look at the legal framework and subsequently we will examine some of the practical hindrances. The legislative framework surrounding the placement of looked after children outside the United Kingdom, for argument's sake, can be divided into two. The two alternative jurisdiction routes are as follows. Inherent jurisdiction, interim care order and permission to place out of the jurisdiction under paragraph 19 of Schedule 2, Children Act 1989. Let us now see whether the inherent jurisdiction of the High Court can be used to place a looked after child with a connected person or an alternative carer who lives outside the United Kingdom. This involves the use of the court's inherent jurisdiction in the form of wardship. Wardship is a type of court proceedings by which a child is made a ward of court. In effect, the court becomes the legal guardian of such a child. The use of wardship was significantly reduced by the coming into force of the Children Act 1989. Section 100 of the Children Act 1989 provides the statutory scheme which, in the first instance, regulates the use of wardship in public law proceedings. Section 100, subsection 2 provides that no court shall exercise the High Court's inherent jurisdiction with respect to children so as to require a child to be placed in the care or put under the supervision of a local authority, so as to require a child to be accommodated by or on behalf of a local authority, so as to make a child who is the subject of a care order a ward of court, or for the purpose of conferring on any local authority power to determine any question which has arisen or which may arise in connection with any aspect of parental responsibility for a child. Subsection 3 provides that no application for any exercise of the court's inherent jurisdiction with respect to children may be made by a local authority unless the authority have obtained the leave of the court. Subsection 4 provides that the court may only grant leave if it is satisfied that the result which the authority wished to achieve could not be achieved through the making of any order of a kind to which subsection 5 applies and there is reasonable cause to believe that if the court's inherent jurisdiction is not exercised with respect to the child, he is likely to suffer significant harm. Subsection 5 states that this subsection applies to any order, made otherwise than in the exercise of the court's inherent jurisdiction, and which the local authority is entitled to apply for, assuming in the case of any application which may only be made with leave, that leave is granted. It follows, therefore, that in the event that the court is to give leave to invoke its inherent jurisdiction under Section 100, Subsection 3 of the Children Act 1989, the court has to be satisfied that the result which the authority wished to achieve could not be achieved through the making of any order of a kind to which Subsection 5 applies. Consequently, wardship process is not appropriate for looked-after children because there is a law which could achieve the result which the authority seeks to achieve and this is provided for under Schedule 2, Paragraph 19, Children Act 1989. Paragraph 19 of Schedule 2 of the Children Act 1989 provides for the placement of looked-after children outside the United Kingdom as follows. Paragraph 19.1 states that a local authority may only arrange for or assist in arranging for any child in their care to live outside England and Wales with the approval of the court. Paragraph 19.2 states that a local authority may, with the approval of every person who has parental responsibility for the child, arrange for or assist in arranging for any other child looked after by them 
to live outside England and Wales. Paragraph 19.3 states that the court shall not give its approval under subparagraph 1 unless it is satisfied that living outside England and Wales would be in the child's best interests, suitable arrangements have been or will be made for his reception and welfare in the country in which he will live, the child has consented to living in that country and every person who has parental responsibility for the child has consented to his living in that country. Paragraph 19.4 states that where the court is satisfied that the child does not have sufficient understanding to give or withhold his consent, it may disregard subparagraph 3c and give its approval if the child is to live in the country concerned with a parent, guardian, special guardian or other suitable person. Paragraph 19.5 states that where a person whose consent is required by subparagraph 3d fails to give his consent, the court may disregard that provision and give its approval if it is satisfied that the person cannot be found, is incapable of consenting or is withholding his consent unreasonably. Paragraph 19.6 states that Section 85 of the Adoption and Children Act 2002, which imposes restrictions on taking children out of the United Kingdom, shall not apply in the case of any child who is to live outside England and Wales with the approval of the court given under this paragraph. Paragraph 19.7 states that where a court decides to give its approval under this paragraph, it may order that its decision is not to have effect during the appeal period. Paragraph 19.8 states that in subparagraph 7, the appeal period means... Where an appeal is made against the decision, the period between the making of the decision and the determination of the appeal, and, otherwise, the period during which an appeal may be made against the decision. Paragraph 19.9 states that this paragraph does not apply to a local authority placing a child for adoption with prospective adopters. This piece of legislation has to be read with Section 31, Subsection 2 of Children Act 1989. Please view our video titled What is Significant Harm, which explains what you have to prove to the court. Now let's turn to the practical considerations and hindrances you are likely to face when seeking to place a looked-after child with a connected person in a foreign country. Parental consent is not enough to enable a looked-after child to be placed with a connected person who resides outside of the UK the local authority must seek the approval of the court. The local authority should consider whether the looked-after status of the child should be substituted with an alternative order when the child is placed so as to remove the lack review obligations. Some foreign jurisdictions, including Eastern Europe, do not have equivalent provision for granting parental responsibility to grandparents or other carers, short of adoption. In other words, the concept of parental responsibility does not exist in these types of foreign jurisdictions. The implication of this is that the person with whom the child is placed in the foreign jurisdiction cannot override the parental responsibility of birth parents. Fostering an adoption is usually available in these jurisdictions, but you also find that fostering does not confer parental responsibility to the carer and they would care for the child subject to the consent of parents. Some foreign jurisdictions are considered unsafe for citizens of the United Kingdom. This could be in terms of the political landscape, or there is ongoing instability in that country. Please check the website of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, FCO, website. If the United Kingdom does not have an embassy in that foreign country, it would mean that such a child cannot easily obtain the assistance of the British government and consular visits would be impossible. Sometimes it is necessary to obtain a reciprocal or equivalent order in the foreign jurisdiction. This is neither cheap nor quick in most jurisdictions because a foreign lawyer will have to be instructed and often there is language and cultural barriers to overcome and issuing an application in a foreign country to the conclusion of the proceedings can take months. A British Embassy official may have to attend all the hearing. It is often impossible to monitor the placement. Once the placement is made in a foreign country, the best way to monitor the placement is through the Embassy consular staff, 
on a regular basis. But if the carer makes it difficult for embassy staff to know their whereabouts, then the child becomes lost in that foreign country. In the event of a breakdown of the placement in a foreign jurisdiction, it is often difficult to implement a Plan B because the placing authority is not able to easily find alternative carer for the child in a foreign jurisdiction and it is not easy to arrange the return of the child to the United Kingdom. In situations where both parents of the child are from that foreign jurisdiction, then there may not be conflict of which law applies to the child. But where only one parent is from that foreign jurisdiction and the child is British, this can create complications for the child if the child is required to renounce his or her British citizenship. There are two ways of carrying out the assessment of the prospective carer. The first is for an assessor to travel to the foreign country and carry out the assessment. The second option is to instruct an assessor in the foreign country. Skype is a useful tool to use in communicating with someone who lives in a foreign country. It may be necessary to obtain legal advice from a lawyer local to the foreign country regarding whether there is reciprocal local law similar to a care order, parental responsibility, whether there is a children's social services in the country, and likely duration of any local court application in the foreign country. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office is a good starting point in obtaining information about the country and the British Embassy staff should be consulted before any decision is made about a foreign country. Ask them any question. They are usually very helpful. A decided case exploring this type of placement is the London Borough of Islington versus EV and others, reported in 2010 EWHC 3240 Family. I hope you found this discussion useful. Please provide your feedback on the topic considered in this video through admin at tinajew.co.uk. You may wish to also visit our YouTube channel Tina Jew and view other videos. Copyright Tina Jew Limited, all rights reserved.